Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Holy Spirit Roman Catholic Church. This is the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We especially welcome all of our visitors. Those in attendance, please turn off your cell phones at this time. For those of you who are watching at home, please stand, sit, or kneel at the appropriate time. <clears throat> the Mass intentions for this Mass are for the United States of America and for the repose of the soul of Joseph Kohler. Please stand with me now and recite the prayer to St. Michael. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and spirit of the devil. May God forgive you. 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 The opening hymn is All the Ends of the Earth. <laughs> of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Hey, it's the 4th of July weekend, uh, celebrating in a different way this year. So glad you're all here. As we come into the presence of the Lord this day, let's begin by calling to mind our sinfulness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, 
God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Every day I will 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only of the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Matthew. May the word of God be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me then, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Prayer was a very big part of Jesus' life. He would often leave his disciples and go off by himself frequently up to the top of the mountain where he would pray, sometimes all night. Now, for the most part, I would say his prayers were private prayers, but he did pray publicly, like in, in today's gospel. 
It was a prayer of thanksgiving directed heavenward, but within earshot of an audience. Hmm. I definitely think it was meant to be heard by those nearby, but for a particular purpose. I'm sure it was a diverse crowd, men and women, boys and girls, healthy and sick, wealthy and poor, the sleek and the sound, and maybe those marginalized and broken. But it would have been divided into two basic groups. Let's call them group A and group B. The scribes and the Pharisees, group A, common folks, group B. As a matter of fact, I could imagine Jesus perhaps hamming it up a little bit so as to make it clear that he was making a distinction between these two groups. He prays, thank you, Father, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to the childlike. Another way of putting it may be, thank you, Father, that you've hidden these things from the intelligent, the prudent, the sophisticated, the sleek, and the sound, but revealed them to the children, the infants, the mere babes, the childlike, to the unsophisticated folks, the common folk. I checked out several Bible translations, and all of those individual terms were used to describe people from those two groups in that reading. And so you could see the, that his words could possibly have been perceived as a not-so-veiled, well, insult to group A, but a reassurance to those in group B. And wouldn't we all prefer to be in group B? Frankly, I think the fact that we're here this morning is an indication that we are members of group B. Now, now, because of all of my uh, higher education and theology, the seminary, and because of my many, many, many years of pastoral experience, I would naturally be considered to be a part of that first group. But by desire, I can choose to be a part of that second group. I would follow that subtle warning of the reading and choose to align myself with you guys. Now, before we go any further, let me make something clear. We are not called to be a bunch of dummies. Despite that book out there, they call it Catholic Catholicism for Dummies. No, we're not called upon. We're called upon to know our faith quite well, actually. But this church has, the, the church has this great tradition of deep thinking. We have many great saints who were intellectuals. The early church fathers, for instance, including people like Justin the philosopher and St. Augustine. Then we have saints like Bonaventure, a follower of Francis of Azizi, um, Albert the Great, a great scientist, Thomas Aquinas, the philosopher, theologian, and many more. But I would say that they were, well, kind of the exceptions to the rule. They were given that special grace that they needed to see clearly and to teach clearly, and yet also were given enough information and grace to be able to make that free choice to be humble and childlike in accordance with the scriptures. So they serve as a counterpoint to those in group B. Simple saints like, well, St. Bernadette, the shepherd children at Fatima, Joan of Arc, Maria Goretti, our own Philomena, and Father Salatus. Like St. Paul once said in one of his letters to the Corinthians, God has chosen the nobodies of this world to reduce to nothing those who thought they were something. I've always enjoyed that particular one because I've always preached that God chooses unlikely candidates. <clears throat> There's a big struggle going on in the world right now, and more specifically in our country, between two groups of people. And I think that today's reading can apply to our present situation. But I feel confident in saying that our ordeal has its origins within that first group, group A, the wise and the learned ones. Throughout history, there were always people in group A who, through their intellectual pride, tried to exert influence on the lowly ones, the childlike, those in group B. This was certainly true of the promoters of the heresy of Gnosticism. This was the first great heresy that the church had to contend with back in the early years. They thought, saw themselves as, well, smarter than thou. 
We have some people who say holier than thou. They were smarter than thou. Then we had the Renaissance in the Middle Ages when more and more people were getting educated and enlightened. As a matter of fact, in the years to come, it, we, they would call it the Age of Enlightenment. And this was when St. Paul's admonition to us through St. Timothy became ever more relevant. This is that passage that I mentioned from time to time. Paul says to Timothy, there will come a time when men will not endure the sound doctrine, but having those itching ears and being lovers of novelty, they would gather to themselves false, false teachers according to their own lusts. Well, it seems as if the chickens have indeed come home to roost. Are we now not suffering the result of this sad situation? The things that our children have learned in the universities and before that in the high schools, including some Catholic high schools, have led us to this point. And so I say that the truth has been distorted and denied by those who are indeed considered the most learned. Of all of the events in the past few months, there was a defining moment for me when I witnessed a short commentary from a very distinguished individual from Group A. Matter of fact, Deacon Jerry alluded to this quite early on. A learned man of great stature, in fact, the governor of a great state. In one of his press conferences, he said, and I quote, this wasn't God, this wasn't faith, this was us. Of course, he was talking about the progress that his state had made in, well, flattening the curve and over, trying to overcome the COVID crisis. Of course, all of this was under his leadership that this, this happened. Now, Bishop Robert Barron of California had a few things to say about this in one of his Word on Fire commentaries. First off, he said that the governor had a lot of hubris. I presume we're all familiar with this word. It is kind of an obscure one, but I knew what that meant. It meant arrogance. Nevertheless, I wanted to look up a definition and see what they had to say, and I learned something new, and I want to share it with you. Let me read it. Hubris, from the ancient Greeks, a particular brand of cockiness that was considered a dangerous character flaw capable of provoking the wrath of the gods. In classic Greek tragedy, hubris was often a fatal shortcoming that brought about the fall of a tragic hero. Typically, overconfidence led the hero to attempt to overstep the boundaries of human limitations and assume a godlike status. And the gods inevitably humbled the offender with a sharp reminder of his mortality. So, be careful, governors, and those who listen to them, and those who think like them, and those who act like them. I saw another example of hubris on TV a few nights ago. There was this wild-looking man wearing a mask. He was not wearing a shirt. <laughs> he was at the head of a mob. They were face-to-face -face with a line of police defending property in a riot zone. And he was screaming at them, clenching his fist, wagging his finger, calling them uneducated and accusing the black officers in their midst of being traitors to the cause, who should be ashamed of themselves for not crossing over to the other side and supporting the cause of the people. Hubris. A bit Bishop Barron went on to say another thing that caught my attention. He referred to a short passage from Isaiah. I was familiar with it. This comes up in our office of readings from time to time. It's an unusual line, but it should give us all pause for reflection. It says, in contradiction to what the governor said, you, Lord, have accomplished all that we have done. Let's go through that again. You, Lord, have accomplished all that we have done. Hmm. It's kind of an unusual saying. Kind of cool. What the bishop was saying is that God is intimately involved with human action. And he responds to prayer. But it does take humility and well, it's a certain charity to understand and accept this idea. And I don't see a whole lot of humility on the streets of America right now. I strongly recommend that you go listen to Bishop Barron's full talk. It's on his Word on Fire website. Just look up, um, um, well, the name of that governor. I don't like to mention any names. <laughs> oh. 
There's another passage that we should be aware of that should give us some warning about the people out there in Group A, but maybe it can also be something that uh, it holds a mirror up to ourselves. Uh, we have a diverse group of people here today. We're all on different pages of our spiritual walk. So please listen to this line from Psalm 12. Help, O Lord, help, for faithfulness is vanished from among men. Everyone speaks falsehood to his neighbor. With smooth lips they speak with deceitful hearts. May the Lord destroy all lying lips and every boastful tongue and those who say our strength is with our tongues. Our lives are our own. Who is Lord over us? Yeah, I think that applies to both group A and B. Now, if you encountered somebody from group A, maybe a son or a daughter, a nephew, a niece, a neighbor, a parent, or some stranger in the line over at Kroger's who maybe singled you out and called you every name in the book because you were a member of Group B, what would you say? What should we say? Well, I certainly hope you wouldn't return the favor. Scripture is pretty clear on that. Do not return insult for insult. On the contrary, love your neighbor. Do good to those who persecute you. Pray for your enemies. And so arguing would obviously be a waste of time. We all know that. We may not even be able to get a word in edgewise. But, but, there may be something that we could say. And I'd like to think that God would anoint our words in some special way. Not immediately necessarily, but something that that person could take away from the argument. Reflect upon Again, it's from St. Paul. He's a, a man with a lot of advice for us, you know. Paul encourages all of us in group B by saying, God has entrusted the message of reconciliation to us. This makes us ambassadors of Christ. So we can say to our adver adversaries that God is appealing to them through us. So Paul gives us this one short liner. Take your pens out. I want you to write this down. We can lovingly shout this back at our accusers, our learned friends in group A. It goes like this. We implore you in Christ's name, be reconciled to God. Period. Let's try that one more time. We implore you in Christ's name, be reconciled to God. And then you could walk away. What would they do with that particular phrase? My goodness, what does that mean? Hmm. Maybe we could make this into our own protest signs. I, we know somebody in the printing industry, one of the Knights of Columbus, we can, we can have them print up signs. Uh, or we can put them in our front yards or, or in the windows of our houses. Um, we could have bumper stickers made. We could print the message on, well, T-shirts, baseball hats. It could be the signature down at the bottom of our emails and our, our tweets. Father Lobert could make up a whole new batch of buttons with that phrase on it. We could maybe rent billboard space out on the freeway. Huh. Be reconciled to God, we implore you. It could go viral, spreading out throughout the whole world. The possibilities are endless. Starting right here at Holy Spirit Church on this day, these words could be the new Christian slogan of our times. So what do you think, folks? Great idea. So I, am, I just want to implore you as we address this, this possibility that you do all those things, but just one thing maybe you shouldn't do, don't spray paint those words on the side of a building. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things one and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now with confidence and trust, let's bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church and all who exercise her ministry, may we grow in holiness by God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the whole world through the power and mercy of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishop, Earl Boyer, that his call to discipleship will help us to understand and embrace the diocesan services appeal as a way to faithfully participate in the good works of your holy Catholic Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings and continued graces upon the lives of all of us gathered here, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have suffered from the effects of the pandemic, may God's Holy Spirit bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the vulnerable, the lonely, and the forgotten, that they know the security and love of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Joe Hansen, Sherry McMiller, Yvonne Hospidor, and Charlie McCarran, that God's grace may bring them strength and comfort during their illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Robert Bytel and Frank Reeser, that they may come to share in the eternal life of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the United States of America, and Joseph Kohler, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's add a prayer of thanksgiving for all that we enjoy as Americans, the many freedoms and our prosperity, and God, asking God's mercy upon our country during this time when all of that is challenged. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, let's pray for our enemies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty and loving God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not uh, pass the basket this time, but uh, we ask you to please drop something in the basket as you leave at the end of Mass. The offertory hymn is Turn to Me. Where's the one? 
put all that over there. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth down below. The heavens will vanish like smoke and the earth will wear out like a garment. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Now in a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, along with Benedict, Earl, our Bishop, with Carl, our Deacon Jerry, Father John, Father Richard, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Today we remember Joseph and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our patroness Philomena, Padre Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Instructions for the reception of Holy Communion. I ask the uh, center group here to come by way of the center aisle, followed by those on the side coming by way of the back, and finally those of you uh, in Group C out there in the uh, activity center to come up lastly. Now I notice that we have a little bit of an obstacle course here. We have many appliances, healthcare appliances there in the middle of the, the aisle. Be careful, everybody. I don't want any more. <laughs> 
health appliances. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
First weekend of the month, and we'll say our St. Philomena prayer at the end. Um, we don't have the worship aids out there. I suspect by now you might be able to wing it. I'll try to assist you as best I can. Maybe this is something that we can get for our big screen up here for the months ahead. Oh. Our parish is certainly grateful to all of you for your continued support to, throughout the uh, Corona crisis. And all these masses had to be discontinued. We've taken a significant financial plunge with regards to our budget, and we're asking your help in continuing to send your contributions in so that we can keep our employees on payroll and continue to pay our overhead expenses. With regard to the DSA, this is also a big part of our um, parish life. We're at about 50% of our goal right now. So please prayerfully consider making a pledge to the fund uh, to support programs like, well, the one that brought our Father John to the priesthood. Also, we have a lot of deacons who are entering the program. We've got a, new, a lot of bunch of uh, new seminarians coming up for this next year, so they're going to have to be supported as well. So please consider making your contribution. Uh, this week, uh, we have our healing mass Tuesday evening. We've got a lot of masses for the saints throughout the uh, month of July. One of them is, uh, well, he's not quite a saint yet, but we're working on it. That's uh, Father Tolton, the first black American priest. Uh, we had a play about him several years ago here at our parish, but uh, that's next Thursday. Uh, the week after that, on a Tuesday evening, uh, we're going to have Mass outside. Granted, there's only a handful of you here who come to the Tuesday evening Masses, but maybe we can persuade more, because this is going to be to honor Katiri Takawitha, uh, American Indian saint. Uh, so we have a statue of her out on our our trail, so uh, I thought it would be nice if we did a, a mass out there. So bring your lawn chair and uh, bug spray. The third Tuesday of the month is the prayer of reparation. This is where we come together and basically do what Jesus did to pray to the Father. Father, forgive them out there in group A. They don't, don't know what they're doing. 
So there's almost nothing we can do other than that, really, when you come right down to it. So to come together and to pray a prayer of reparation for our world. We've got uh, these new wristbands. These are well, kind of like custom made for people in Group B. This is from Padre Pio in his quotes, pray, hope, and don't worry. Hey, folks, pray, hope, and don't worry. Uh, I think that's a pretty good philosophy for these times that we're in, so let's do that. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sending forth him is, Mine eyes have seen the glory. Sing the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the spear, the lightning of the terrible of sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Virgin and martyr Saint Philomena, behold us standing in spirit before the throne on which it has pleased the most holy Trinity to place thee. Full of confidence in thy protection, we beseech thee to intercede for us. From the height of thy heavenly country, deign to cast a look upon thy humble servants. Spouse of Jesus Christ, console us in our troubles, strengthen us in temptations, protect us in the which surround us every side, obtain all the graces necessary for us, especially God's divine will and care for Holy Spirit, Catholic Church, and school, and above all, assist us at the hour of our death. Saint Philomena, powerful with God, pray for us.
the chaplet of divine mercy, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in jud to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and to life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer thee the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer thee the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer thee the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. St. Philomena, pray for us. St. Faustina, pray for us. St. Anthony of Padua, be with us. St. Padre Pio, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.